Praise the Lord. We love a greetings to you and to your household. I trust that all is well with you. So we are continuing our Bible studies on the book of Exodus. And today we are studying Exodus chapter 2. Last time we studied Exodus chapter 1 and we learned that after Joseph and all his brothers died, a new Pharaoh who knew nothing about Joseph nor his impact on the nation of Egypt rose into power. And when he saw that the Israelites grew and multiplied in numbers, he feared that if war broke out between them and their enemies, the Israelites would join in with their enemies and fight against them. And so he he ordered that all the newborn babies of the Israelites, the boys, should be thrown into the Nile River. Beloved, if you missed this study, please watch it from this channel and please subscribe so that you always be notified when a lesson becomes available. And so, beloved, let's go on to today's study and find out how God shows himself strong on the side of the Israelites to fight against this evil king. Pharaoh. And so, beloved, verse 1 of Exodus chapter 2 says, During this time, a man from the tribe of Levi married a woman also from the tribe of Levi, and she bore him a son. So, beloved, during this time means that it was the time when Pharaoh was putting all the baby boys into the Nile River. And during this time when Pharaoh was doing this evil act, a man from the tribe of Levi, and Levi was the third born son of Jacob. His descendants are known as the Levites. So a man who is descended from Levi married another woman also who is a descendant from Levi and she bore him a son. And so beloved, the Bible says that when the woman saw what a fine baby he was, she hid him for three months. But when she could not hide him any longer, she took a basket made of reeds and covered it with tar to make it watertight. She put the baby in it and then placed it in the tall grass at the edge of the river. The baby sister stood some distance away to see what would happen to him. Exodus 6 verse 20 lets us know that the name of this baby's mother is Jochebed. And so, beloved, this woman, Jochebed, believed that God will protect her son. And so this is why she was able to hide him for three months. And God indeed protected this boy because, beloved, all the cries of a newborn baby could not alert anyone to find out that there was a baby in this house. And so, indeed, God protected this baby and did not make anyone find out that he was still alive in the house. And so, beloved, after this woman had acted in faith, verse 5 says, The king's daughter came down to the river to bathe, while her servant walked along the bank. Suddenly, she noticed the basket in the tall grass, and she sent a slave woman to get it. The princess opened it and saw a baby boy. He was crying, and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies she said. Then his sister asked her, shall I go and call a Hebrew woman to nurse the baby for you? Remember that the baby sister was watching along from a distance and so when she saw that the princess had come near her baby brother, she quickly came forward to ask the princess if she would allow her to go and call somebody to nurse this baby for her. And because the baby boys of the Israelites were being killed, it means that there were loads of women who had given birth, who were already nursing. And so this princess agreed for the girl to go and call in somebody to come and nurse the baby for her. And so the princess said, please do, she answered. So the girl went and brought the baby's own mother. The princess told the woman, take this baby and nurse him for me and I will pay you. So she took the baby and nursed him. 
not only did Jokabel, the baby's real mother, see her son alive, but she gets paid for nursing or breastfeeding her own child. How awesome is that, beloved? The Bible says that the Lord rewards those who diligently seek him. And the Bible says it also in Hebrews 11 verse 23 that because Jochebed had faith in God that God would protect her son, she was able, beloved, and moved by faith to put her son in the basket and put it on the river for it to sail. And beloved, because God saw this act of faith, he decided to reward Jochebed and not only did he let her see her son alive but he brought her son back to her so that she would put her son on her lap and breastfeed him how awesome is this great god that we serve beloved whenever we act in faith the lord said that he will reward us and so let's always beloved act in faith even though the thing in the physical realm might seem as if it's impossible for god to do beloved the lord has said in his word that there is nothing impossible for him to do and so whatever you are going through right now, that is stealing your joy and your peace. Believe that God has power to come in and intervene and turn that situation around to make you have victory over that thing that is stealing your joy and your peace. And so beloved, reading on in verse 10, it says, Later, when the child was old enough, she took him to the king's daughter, who adopted him as her own son. She said to herself, I put him out of the water, and so I named him Moses. Pharaoh ordered his men to kill the baby boys of the Israelites, yet his own daughter disobeys his orders. Instead of killing Moses, she saves his life and takes him to be her own son. Beloved, God is awesome. He is the only one who has power to direct us, beloved, to influence our thoughts and influence our actions. And this is why Proverbs 21 verse 1 says that the heart of the king is like water in the palm of God. He directs it whichever way he wants it to go. All you need is to put your trust completely in God and he will take care of everything that concerns you. Whilst Pharaoh was busy giving orders to kill innocent babies, he didn't know that his own daughter was raising the one who will come and deliver the people that he is killing. And so beloved, reading on verse 11 says, When Moses had grown up, he went out to visit his people. And this is talking about the Israelites. And he saw how they were forced to do hard labor. He even saw an Egyptian killed a Hebrew, one of Moses' own people. Moses looked all around and when he saw that no one was watching, he killed the Egyptians and hid his body in the sand. The next day, he went back and saw two Hebrew men fighting. And beloved, Hebrew is another uh, word that describes the people of Israel who are Jacob's descendants. So when Moses saw these two Hebrew people or two Israelites fighting, he said to the one who was in the wrong, Why are you beating up a fellow Hebrew? The man answered, Who made you ruler over us? Are you going to kill me just as you killed that Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and said to himself, People have found out what I have done. When the king heard about what had happened, he tried to have Moses killed. But Moses fled and went to live in the land of Midian. Every sin deserves to be punished and this is why Jesus Christ took the punishment of Adam and Eve's disobedience upon himself and died on the cross, beloved, to pay for the punishment that we deserved. So it is right for us to want the sinner 
encouraged. But beloved, the Lord God has said it in Romans 12 verse 19, that vengeance is mine, I will repay. Beloved, the reason why God has said to us not to judge or to take revenge on people is because you do not know what is in the heart and thoughts of man. And because you cannot read the mind to know what exactly is there and what provoked that person to make that decision to sin, you are certain to make the wrong judgment in the punishment that you think the sinner deserves. When Moses took matters into his own hands and killed the sinner, he lost his own home by running away for fear of being killed also. So that you do not judge wrongly and be in trouble yourself, simply obey God, beloved, and let God do the avenging for you. And so, beloved, after Moses fled from Egypt into the land of Midian, verse 16 says, one day when Moses was sitting by a well, seven daughters of Jethro, the priest of Media, came to draw water and fill the troughs for their father's sheep and goats. But some shepherds drove Jethro's daughters away. Then Moses went to their rescue and watered their animals for them. Moses had a desire to fight for the weak and the oppressed. Even when he got into trouble by helping people and lost his home and lost his title as the prince of Egypt and the grandson of Pharaoh and to wander in the wilderness because of this, beloved, it didn't stop Moses from helping people. When he had lost his beautiful home, a home in the palace, beloved, and lost all these privileges that he had, beloved, because of helping people, Moses did not still stop helping people. He still continued, beloved, to have compassion on people. And as we can see here, beloved, he went out of his way to extend help to Jethro's daughters, when these men were driving them away, beloved, he had compassion on them and went in to rescue them. And the Bible says that they were shepherds, meaning that there were more than one man. But Moses didn't let how many these men were frighten him. Because of his compassion and his care for man, beloved, he went in to rescue these girls, even though the men outnumbered him. So because he cared so much about people and did not want to see people oppressed, beloved, he went out of his way and rescued these women from these shepherds without thinking about his own safety. And so after he had rescued these women from the shepherds, verse 18 says, when they returned to their father, he asked, why have you come back so early? Then they answered, an Egyptian rescued us from the shepherds and he even drew water for us and watered our animals. Where is he? He asked his daughters. Why did you leave the man out there? Go and invite him to eat with us. So Moses decided to leave there and Jethro gave him his daughter Zipporah in marriage who bore him a son. Moses said to himself, I am a foreigner in this land, and so I name him Geshem. In those days and in their culture, it wasn't easy and cheap to marry a woman. Remember when Abraham sent the chief servant of his household to go and get a wife for his son, Isaac. He sent him with 10 camels, loaded the camels with gifts of gold and many valuable things just to go and pay it as a dowry to get a wife for Isaac. And when it was time for Jacob also to go and get a wife, because he didn't have any property or wealth with him, the Bible says that he served seven years to get a wife. 
So it was very costly to marry a woman in those days. And we know that since Moses was running away, he wouldn't have taken any property or wealth with him. And so when he came over here, he didn't have anything with him. But because he was kind and beloved, he offered to put his life on the line to save these women from their oppressors and even went ahead to water their animals. Beloved, his kindness paid off and he found favor with their father so that this man gave to Moses a wife without taking any payment of a dowry. When you have a heart like Moses and you hate to see people suffer or you hate to see people being oppressed and always go out of your way to help people and to make life easy for people, then beloved, know that when you are in trouble, the same way with the favor of God, go ahead of you and make things easy for you, give you peace and make you achieve greater things in this life. And so, beloved, after Moses has lived in Midian for some time, verse 23 says that years later, the king of Egypt died. But the Israelites were still groaning under their slavery and cried out for help. Their cry went up to God who heard their groaning and remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. He saw the slavery of the Israelites and he was concerned for them. God heard the cries of the Israelites. He saw how they were mistreated as slaves and he was concerned for them. Beloved, maybe like the Israelites, you are facing a difficult situation right now. Maybe, beloved, you have so many problems that you cannot share with anyone and you feel so helpless. It might seem like there is no hope and you feel like giving up. But beloved, don't give up because God is in control. He has heard your cry and not only is he concerned for you, but he is willing to help you to overcome this challenge. Moses was a baby and didn't understand what was going on around him. And yet God protected him. God protected him from Pharaoh's baby killers and God protected him three months in his mother's home that nobody heard his cry to take him out to kill him. Not only that, beloved, but God also protected baby Moses in the basket so that he didn't sink in the river, but he floated to safety. And when Pharaoh's daughter saw Moses, God protected Moses also so that the daughter of killer Pharaoh couldn't kill Moses but instead sent Moses right back to his birth mother. If you have surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, then the same way that God protected baby Moses is the same way, beloved, that God will protect you. 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 3 says that the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. If God should open your eyes to see in the supernatural, beloved, you will be amazed how God has protected you from the evil devices of Satan and your enemies and how he has kept you alive all these years. If God has not been our protector, none of us would have been alive today. And so, beloved, cheer up whatever you are going through. Have faith that the Lord God of Israel, who does not sleep nor slumber, is watching over you day and night and has he fought for the children of Israel and has he saved baby Moses from drowning. So, beloved, will he save you from any difficulty that you are in right now and so beloved we've come to the end of today's study but please join me again next time as we continue on the studies on exodus and next time we find out how god intervenes and responds to the cries and groanings of the israelites and so beloved until then may the lord shield you from all danger and give you a great reward you are blessed